Well, alternative varieties, or we can call them emerging varieties. Um, the fact number one is 90% of Australian wine is made from a dozen or so varieties. Secondly, they're all grown in pretty much every region. So we have this boring homogeneity about Australian wine and, and we're not, in my view, we're not matching the climate and the variety particularly well. And that certainly doesn't happen in Europe where they have much more, much more closer interaction between climate and variety. So the new varieties, the emerging varieties, can offer us a number of advantages and one in particular is that they a lot of them have much better heat and drought tolerance than our existing varieties. And this is a consequence of many of them coming, of course, from the Mediterranean and where they have evolved under those, those conditions. Um, what goes along with that often is that they're later ripening, so they ripen during a, a cooler time of the year. And a lot of them have much better acid retention than our existing varieties. So all in all, uh, they, they can offer us much better adaptation to heat and drought and we certainly need this in the face of global warming. Uh, another important factor is that they can offer us a, a greater range of flavours and, and tastes than many of our existing varieties. The, a lot of the Italian varieties offer us a savouriness that we don't find in, in our standard uh, French uh, origin varieties. Um, new flavours, um, and a lot of the, the, the white wines, we can have white wines with texture and mouthfeel, such as from Fiano and, uh, and, uh, and Arnais, that, that we can't find in many of our existing varieties. Uh, what else? I think um, they often are better, better suited to uh, Asian foods than many of our existing varieties. And I think they often can be better suited to particular wine styles, such as uh, uh, Prosecco, for example, is, is uh, better suited to making Prosecco-style wines, obviously.